Good morning again, everybody. <laughs> Great to have you here. I'm so glad that you have come to church today. I want to welcome you, and I want to welcome everybody that's in Isanti today. Thank you for coming out to church there in Isanti, and if you're watching us online, it's great to have you join us that way as well. And uh, it, you know what? I know that we all come to church maybe for different reasons, and we all have, uh, you know, maybe some of us are coming with, you know, I'm not really sure about that God thing, and I, I just want to check it out. Some of us, maybe we're coming back to church after years and years, or maybe some of us is just a part of our life and, and all that. And I just want to say this to all, every one of us. You know, it is our hope and our prayer that you will experience God in an amazing way. That wherever you're at, and whatever you're at in life, and I know that every one of us are in different places. And every one of us have struggles. And I pray that each one of us would find peace and security and direction through a relationship with God. And and if you are a first-timer here, that is our hope for you, that you would find you know, peace and direction and God's moving in your life and that you will discover that you can trust God no matter what happens in your life. And that's what we hope for all of you. So uh, we are starting a brand new series today, so it's a great time to come if you're here for the first time. And this, uh, this series is called The Genius of Jesus. And what we're going to be talking about is some of the things that Jesus said that are like, there's no other way to describe it, but that's just amazing. I mean, that, that's genius. Who would have ever thought of that? You know, who, who would have ever thought that that would be true? Or who would have ever thought that that would go that way? Because when Jesus came on this earth, he only spent three years, just three short years teaching. And his teachings were so amazing. They were things People never heard before. I mean, sometimes we are all influenced by it, and, and sometimes we don't even know all the things that Jesus said. Maybe we you know, don't know or haven't read the Bible several times and really know, but the things that Jesus said are absolutely genius. They're, they're, they're like amazing, and they're so amazing that when Jesus was on this earth, he spent three years teaching, and he had crowds like no other. I mean, there were so many people around him, he couldn't, he could hardly barely get away from the crowds because people just flocked to hear what he had to say. He spoke with such confidence. He spoke with such authority. And the things he said, people have never, ever dreamed of before. As a matter of fact, when he was here, here's what people said about him. When Jesus had finished saying these things, and this is after a whole day of teaching, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. They were absolutely amazed at the things that this guy said. They were amazed at the truth of it and, and the things that he said changed people's life. It, it changed perspectives. It changed how people behave. It changed how people thought. It actually changed people's morals. It, it changed how they make decisions. It changed values of people when they heard these teachings of Jesus because they were absolutely amazing. And then even when Jesus was gone, his followers continued the teaching. They just continued to say again the things that Jesus said that changes people's lives. And we know of the Bible. And they, they wrote down, I mean, many, many things, probably not everything Jesus said, but are written in the Bible for us today to, to know what Jesus said and these amazing teachings that Jesus said. And it really has, it has affected so many. It's, effect, it's affected our world. It has literally changed the world, these amazing teachings of Jesus. And even, even people who don't necessarily, aren't necessarily, you know, God followers have used the teachings of Jesus Governments have used the teachings of Jesus. I mean, leaders have used the teachings of Jesus Christ because they're absolutely so amazing. And uh, we got a couple of quotes here. This is from one of our presidents, and, and this is the foundation of the United States of America. I mean, literally one of the, I mean, I think for, for so many years, has been the greatest nation that has influenced our world in a positive way. Now, I know that's not popular to say anymore today, but I absolutely believe that the United States of America has been the most positive influence in our whole world. And, and, and here's part of the reason why. And Calvin uh, Coolidge says this. He said, the foundations of our society and our government rest so much on the teachings of the Bible that it would be difficult to support them if faith in these teachings would cease to be practically universal in our country. In other words, what he said is this, that this whole nation has been 
built upon the teachings of Jesus, the teachings of the Bible. So much so that it won't work if people don't follow the faith. If, if people wander from the faith, that this great nation isn't going to work in the way that it was set up, in freedom in the way that it was set up that it was. Because it has to be followed, you know, the teachings of Jesus kind of made this whole thing what it is. And not only that, but we have a quote here from Albert Einstein, which, you know, uh, may not even, as a matter of fact, I don't think he was even a Christian, but listen to what he says about uh, a Jesus. It's just absolutely amazing. He says, no man can read the Gospels without feeling the actual presence of Jesus. His personality pulsates in every word. No myth is filled with such life. I mean, Jesus cannot be a myth because no myth is filled with such truth, with such life, with such vibrance, with such reality, with such amazing, amazing things. Theseus and other heroes of his lack the authentic vitality of Jesus. In other words, all this Greek mythology and all these other gods, they lack something huge. They lack the truth and the, the genius and, and the presence of the, and the movement of Jesus Christ. And they lack that. And e even in uh, academia, even in education. Now, I'm going to uh, read you a quote in just a second from Harvard University. For the first 100 years, this was in their student handbook. L listen to how powerful the, the sayings of Jesus were. It says, let every student be plainly instructed and earnestly pressed to consider well the main end of his life and studies is to know God and Jesus Christ, which is eternal life found in the Bible, and therefore to, to lay Jesus Christ as the only foundation of all sound knowledge and learning. And seeing the Lord only giveth wisdom, let everyone seriously set himself by prayer in secret to seek it of him. In other words, these sayings of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus is life. And, and may everybody focus and set their lives towards this. This is the greatest thing in life, even by Harvard University. Now, they've changed since then, but that was the very foundation of them. And, you know, uh, Jesus' teachings were absolutely amazing. And the things that he said might seem different than what they look at on the surface, but they're so genius that if we, if we follow them through and if we understand what Jesus was saying, they really are life and they really change everything. And we're going to start today by talking about something that Jesus said, which uh, right off the bat you'd think, man, this is like, this is, sounds sad. This even sounds scary, but here's, here's one of the teachings. Here's what Jesus said. He said, blessed are you when people insult you. They persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you. So Jesus says, hey, you're blessed if people just think you're a nerd. If people think that you're impatient, that you're kind of a jerk, you know, if people like talk behind your back and people think you're just, like Jesus says, hey, hey, you're blessed if you're really a butthead, you know. Really, really blessed. And like, that's the oddest thing. Isn't that odd that Jesus would say that? Oh, maybe we shouldn't take it out of context. Sorry, sorry. It goes on. He says, because of me. Okay, so not that we're going to be bad or act bad or do that. But he says, hey, you're blessed if, if you're persecuted and people talk negatively about you because you're a follower of Jesus. He said, you're blessed if people persecute you because you're a follower of Jesus. Like, man, that's just so odd. And he says, rejoice and be glad. If you're persecuted, why? Because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. He, it, in other words, what he's saying is this. like, hey, if people persecute you because you are a Christian person, rejoice in that. You think that is just the oddest thing. Like, you know, being persecuted. People talking behind your back. And you know, if, if, you, were, if you were trying to gain followers... This is not what you would tell people. You would not tell them, oh yeah, by the way, uh, come and follow me, but just so you know, people are going to hate you because you do. 
People are going to talk about you because you do. People are going to persecute you because you do. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of your family might leave you, and yeah, you might lose your house, and yeah, might get killed. But other than that, man, following me is really cool. I mean, it's just great, you know. It's, oh, yeah, top of the world. I mean, this is not what you would tell people if you wanted them to follow you. But, I mean, Jesus was just so honest, and he said, hey, listen, if you choose to follow me, you're going to be blessed. But know this, you will be persecuted. You will be persecuted, talked about. You will be harassed. And, and you know what? This is so true. As a matter of fact, I mean, I love that Jesus is just so honest. And he says, hey, people persecuted you. They're going to persecute. There are people persecuted me. They're going to persecute you. And he was so honest. As a matter of fact, the Bible goes on and, and says other things about that and, and just Another verse says this, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Wow. I mean, you want to follow Jesus? I'll tell you something. Everyone who does will be persecuted. And just so we don't take it personal, we know why. why. Why are they going to persecute me? I, I've never done anything to hurt anybody. Why would I be persecuted? Simply because I'm a follower. And an, another verse says this. If the whole world hates you, keep in mind it might not be your bad breath, okay? Keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belonged to the world, okay, to people who don't believe in God, who aren't followers of God, people who just do their own thing, make up their own God, make up their own rules. If you belong to them, it would love you as its own. But as it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. And like, this is kind of like, wow. Jesus is telling us right out, the world is going to hate you. People who are not followers of Jesus will hate you. You will be persecuted. And you know what? He says, because of me. They persecuted me. The world hated me. Why did the world hate me? Why? Think about it. Jesus healed thousands and thousands. He restored people. He gave people hope. His teachings were life-giving. But yet, they hated him because he was God. Because he was God, the world hated him. And the persecution started with Jesus, and it hasn't stopped to this day. As a matter of fact, the, the very first followers of Jesus, two of his apostles, James and John, right after Jesus had left they were, one day they were going up into the temple just shortly, just weeks after Jesus was gone, and they were telling people about Jesus Christ. They were walking into the temple one day, and there was a lame man there. This guy had been there for 40 years. Everybody knew him. He could not walk for 40 years. He was begging for money. And he asked Peter and John for some money, and, and Peter says to him, listen, I don't have any money, but, but you know what I do have, I'll give you. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And the Bible records the story as this man just leaped and ran around. He was just awesome. He, he was totally healed. And because Peter and John healed this man, the authorities threw them in jail. The authorities threw them in jail. And here they're, the next day after they are put in jail that night, the next day they're explaining to the authorities, the authorities are asking them, what in the world did you do? How did you do this? How did you do In whose name did you do this incredible miracle? And, and Peter says, well, wait, I think I missed something here. Peter says, are we being like accused of doing a good deed to a crippled man? Yes. Why? That's a good thing. Because you did it in the name of Jesus. Now, you could have done it in anybody else's name, but because you did it in the name of Jesus, whether it worked, whether it rescued this man, we hate the name of Jesus. Of Jesus. Why? Why do they hate the name of Jesus? Because he's God. 
And because what he says is true. People hate the name of Jesus. There's no logical reason for it, but they do. And you know, the, the, the world that we live in today, Christianity's always been persecuted. Every religion's persecuted a little bit, but Christianity's always been persecuted from, it, from its very start. And, and you know, th- this, I see these bumper stickers sometimes coexist, you know, like all religions getting along. I, I want you to know that Christians are taught by Jesus to get along with everybody. Christians are taught to love everybody, even to love our enemies. Christians are supposed to, and the teaching of Jesus is to love everybody, accept everybody. But the only difference is that truth is truth. Doesn't mean you make people follow truth, but you stand it for truth yourself. So here's the deal. It's like Christianity can coexist with any other religion, and Christianity can coexist in any culture. But the fact is, other religions can't coexist with Christianity. And people in culture can't stand Christianity. It's Christianity's not the one that's on the offense. Christianity is the one that's, that's being attacked. And it always has been. And, and why? Christianity has done so much good in our world. It is because of Christianity that most third world countries in our world have It's Christians and Christianity and missionaries that brought food, brought education, brought medicine to all of these countries in our world. Now, Christianity, Christians don't always do the Christian thing. That's true. But for the most part, Christianity is all about helping and loving other people. But yet, Christianity is persecuted and hated with a passion. As a matter of fact, we don't hear about this stuff today. We we just don't. But... Here's the actual facts and statistics of what's happening in our world today. That every single month, this is every month, 214 churches or Christian properties are being destroyed in our world. That's a fact. That happens month after month after month. That's the average in our world today where churches are being destroyed and all that. Listen to this. 772 Christians are persecuted every month by beatings, rape, arrests, imprisonments, you know, things like that. That every single month, 772. Why? Because they believe in Jesus. Not because they break laws. Not because they do anything bad. It's because they believe in Jesus Christ that they are persecuted. And this is staggering. 322 people every single month, Christians, are killed solely for their faith. For no other reason but because they believe in Jesus Christ. That is happening in our world today. Where Christians are being persecuted. And Jesus says, come and follow me. But know this. If you do, you will be persecuted and you will be hated. Because they hate me. They're going to hate you. It's not because you do anything bad. You can feed them and clothe them and love them and they will hate you because I am God. That's the world we live in. And you know, here in America, we don't experience those type of things. I don't know if it's ever going to happen. A lot of people say it's going to happen very soon. But being a follower of Jesus Christ costs us something. And I think most of us here, that if you've chosen to follow Jesus Christ, You've chosen to be a Christian, and you've been unashamed of that. You have probably suffered some type of persecution. I know of of many of you, and I know some of your stories, and I have personal family that has stories of, uh, you know, deciding to follow Jesus Christ has, has cost them their family, where they have been excommunicated from their family. Like, you were not invited to family uh, reunions and family gatherings. Why? Because you're rude? Because, no, because you're a Christian. Because you believe in God and you believe in Jesus and you go to church and you read your Bible, you're not invited here. Some of us have experienced being persecuted at work. Or, or maybe, maybe not big, but maybe a little bit where, you know, people talk behind your back. Maybe they laugh at you. Oh, you go to church. You know, you, you, know, you go to church. Like, yeah. That's somehow persecuted or made fun of. You're made fun of if you believe in the Bible. You're made fun of if you believe the things that Jesus said. There is a persecution today for Christians. And listen, I know that some of you, 
you may not, you may not even be, it, it may be what's holding you back from like, I, I want to I like dig in. I, I want to give in. I want to be a follower of Jesus. But one of the things that might be holding you back is, well, I don't want to be too much of a follower because I don't want to be persecuted. I mean, I get that. And there's some, some of us, I mean, be honest with ourselves, some of us, we don't tell people at work that we went to church yesterday, that we believe in the Bible, that we go to a Bible study, that we volunteer. We don't, by gosh, don't tell anybody in your family that you give 10% of your income to the church. Oh my God, you'd be thrown out. You know, like, what? We're afraid to tell people our own convictions and our own experiences because of persecution. And I get that. I understand that. But here's where this amazing, I mean, the genius of Jesus is this. Yeah, I can be honest with you, and I can tell you, if you follow me, you will be persecuted. I can be honest with you because of this. Because rejoice, because your reward will be great. Jesus says this thing that's absolutely amazing. It's genius. Like, how do you tell people you're going to be persecuted? How, you, you be honest with people. Don't you want to hide that? No, I don't need to hide it because of this. Because if you decide to follow me and you are persecuted, rejoice. Because your reward will be awesome. You will be rewarded for suffering any type of persecution for my name's sake. That if you are a Christian and people criticize you, if people don't want a relationship with you, if people take your, I mean, in other countries, if people, you know, take your possessions, throw you in jail, rejoice because your reward will be greater than that jail, greater than a prison because your reward will be eternal. That there will be an eternal reward. And I'll tell you what, we don't think about this much. We, we sometimes just think about right now, this is where we live, this is all we care about. But there is a day, and I promise you, I promise you that there is a day coming when you are going to be so happy that you stood up for Jesus Christ. There is a day coming when you, on judgment day, when you are standing next to the throne of God, you are going to be so happy. The reward is going to be so incredible that you will far, you, it will far outweigh any persecution we could ever experience when we will be so proud to be identified with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and our Savior, and that we will be identified with Him on that day that, no, I was a follower of Jesus. I am not ashamed of Jesus Christ. And you might be persecuted now, but there's a day coming that you are going to be so happy that you are identified with Jesus Christ. It will be worth more than anything you've ever done in your life that you were identified with Jesus, and I was not ashamed of Jesus Christ, and I was proud to know you and I was proud to serve you and to follow you on that day. And, and, and not only just on that day, but there is such a reward. There's, there, there's such a, a benefit to standing up for Jesus, for being identified as a Christian person. Because your standing up and being bold for Jesus can draw other people into their eternal salvation because of your bold enough to invite them to church or to tell them what you believe and that you do believe the Bible is the word of God and you do believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven. And there is such a great reward for that. And I know that every one of us got to struggle with it. Every one of us will wrestle with this. Tomorrow at work, you will wrestle with this, that you will have an opportunity. Every day we have an opportunity to stand up for our beliefs, not to make anybody do anything, but, but to just stand up, to just not be ashamed of the fact that I go to church, I believe in God, I love Jesus, you know, that, that I pray every day, that God helps me, that I feel his presence, that we will have an opportunity. We will, you will have a chance tomorrow at work to stand up for Jesus Christ as a follower of him. And I know there's a struggle. I know there's a struggle there of what am I going to do? I, I know that it'll be a difficult choice. But remember the genius statement of Jesus, and that is, if you feel persecution, rejoice, because your reward is going to be great. When Jesus was with his apostles, his followers, it's not always easy being a Christian. I mean, Jesus had thousands of people wherever he went, crowds always around him. They, they loved to experience his miracles. 
that, and he loved them, and his teachings were great. But you know, sometimes, sometimes it gets rough. It's not always fun and games being a Christian. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it takes a lot. Sometimes it hurts relationships. Sometimes people just don't like the fact that you're a Christian. And when Jesus was here, that was happening. And it happened one time where people just didn't, hey, I, I'm not willing to pay that price. I don't, I don't, wanna, I, I don't want to follow you. And, and so many people left him. And they loved being around him, but ah, no, that's too much. I think, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm checking out. And he had just a bunch of people leave him. And here's what he said to his, his disciples. He says this, you do not want to leave too do you? I mean, imagine. So many people just, I mean, he is a way of life, eternity, and did so much, and then, ah, no, we don't want to follow. And he said to these closest guys to him, you don't want to leave me too. Do you? Are you going to leave? And I love what Peter said. Jesus asked the 12, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, no matter how tough it is, no matter how hard it might be, no matter what the persecution might be, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And as you're maybe making this choice, this decision, should I stand up for Jesus and be a Jesus follower? Can I be bold about going to church and studying my Bible and helping out and being generous? Just remember this, that yes, it might be tough sometimes. Yes, people might make fun of you sometimes. I'll guarantee they will sooner or later. But remember this. Where else are you going to go? Who else are you going to follow? We all have a choice. We could just follow the trend of culture. Just go with culture and believe what culture goes. Don't worry, in five years that will change and you can just change with it and do all that. We have a choice to do that. Maybe make your life a little easier here, no persecution. We have a choice to do that. But remember what Peter said. Lord, even though it's hard, I mean, where else can I go that's true. It's truth. Whether people like it or don't like it, it's truth. There are some things in the Bible I don't like. But I have to come to the conclusion of this, but it's truth. And, and I'm not going to just pick and choose what I don't like. It's, it's truth. Jesus is the Son of God. He is the only way to eternal life. He is God himself. And he is truth. Where else can we go? What else can we do? And Jesus gives us all this promise. If you are willing to stand up and be bold, don't be a freak, just be bold. Just don't be ashamed. You don't have to go knocking on everybody's door and telling them, hey, I'm a Christian. Okay, you don't need to do that. But the people you are around, don't be ashamed of your faith and your beliefs and your God. Don't be ashamed. You will be persecuted. But rejoice because your reward will be so much greater than that. And we don't talk about the future much. We don't live that way in our life. But I want you to know that this is, this is genius of Jesus to tell us that there is a reward coming that will be so great. It will be worth any persecution we could go through. So with that, I challenge every one of you to think about what Jesus said. And even though it might be tough for a while, the reward is worth it. And he is truth. Where else are we going to go? So tomorrow, remember that. Remember that in your life as you have opportunity to share your faith, to invite people to church, to be bold about what you believe. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Shaheen to go ahead and pray for all of you there in Isanti. And I'm going to pray for us here. Father, I, I, I thank you for Jesus being so honest. You know, just so honest that, hey, if you follow me, people are going to hate you sometimes. But don't be freaked out. They hated me. 
It doesn't matter if all you do is good and you want to bless them. and They're going to hate you just because I'm God. Some people don't like that. Father, we all have a challenge in front of us. Stand up for you and be bold for you. We will be persecuted. But I pray that today you will help us believe your incredible words that make it worth it. That our reward will be so great. Our reward is worth it. That you told us that there is a reward for this. That there is a blessing for this. That you will reward us. That we will be proud to be identified with you. And Father, I pray that you would give every one of us the faith. The faith to believe your incredible words. In Jesus' name, amen.